Welcome to yet another webinar from SQL Maestros. We are doing really well, keeping up with our Thursday schedule. Though the next Thursday might be a bit difficult, but let's see how things go. Uh, in case we are not able to do a webinar on a given Thursday, we postpone it to the next available Thursday. And my commitment to the community has been to kind of do at least one webinar each week. And things have been going well for the last few weeks. Today's webinar is about SQL Server parallelism. And before we start off the topic and the content, etc., common questions that guests get asked all the time. Is this webinar going to be recorded? Yes, it is going to be recorded. Are the recordings going to be freely available? Some recordings are freely available. Some recordings are priced very nominal. And you can check that on sqlmaestros.com. We had to take a difficult decision of putting a small price tag to our webinars because there is a cost to host one webinar each week and a lot of resources go behind the scene trying to organize and set up everything. So um, for whatever reason, that is how it is. But yet some webinars are free and some are nominally priced. So you can go to sqlmaestros.com, sqlmaestros.com and on the menu bar, there's everything there, video courses, master classes, and you will see a link for recorded webinars. So uh, what about past recordings? That's another common question. Well, exactly in the same way, past recordings are also available out there on sqlmaestros.com. So common questions get asked. Another housekeeping thing. Uh, technical questions related to today's content, please use the Q&A panel. Please do not put it in the chat window because in chat window, a lot of messages keep coming and going. So questions might get missed. So technical questions or any other questions, put them in the Q&A window. If you wish to stay connected with me, there are a few links there in the chat window that I've just put. Twitter, Facebook, YouTube, LinkedIn, whatever interests you and wherever you are, there are some links out there. Make sure that you are at least a subscriber to the YouTube channel because every week we are posting at least two to three videos uh, on our YouTube channel. So make sure you're up there. <clears throat> okay, we're all good to go. And let's get started with today's content, SQL Server Parallelism. And welcome once again, all of you. Good morning, good evening, good afternoon, depending on where you have joined from. The first spelling here itself is wrong. But anyway, let's get this out of scene now because we have already started understanding parallelism in SQL Server. That is today's topic. Now, when I was putting down the list of things that I wish to cover in today's webinar, it was just going on and on and on because parallelism in SQL Server, parallel execution in SQL Server is a huge, huge topic. It is complicated also. And there's a lot of... Uh, misconceptions and mysteries around parallel execution in SQL Server. So I was thinking, what approach do I take? You know, do I, do I really start talking about a lot of technical stuff uh, about exchange operators and about uh, uh, the depth of how parallel executions happen in SQL Server? But uh, these webinars, as I begin, you know, typically part one are like level 100 and 200. So I thought I'll take a very simplistic overview because it is important to get the concept to you. Then we can always do part two, etc. And uh, talk uh, more uh, in depth about parallelism in SQL Server. Okay, congratulations to all of you. Today we have 150, okay, it is 160 now, 160 plus people in today's webinar, which is very exciting and very encouraging. So what are we going to talk about? We're going to look at serial execution, the concept of worker thread. We will then see parallel execution. We are going to look at a few things in properties window. We'll talk about execution context, affinity, schedulers, cost threshold of parallelism, max stop options and max stop property. And if time permits, we will also talk about CX weight type. So there are a lot of things that I wish to talk about. And as always, this is a very free flowing discussion and demo focused stuff. I have, I've really not planned too many things. I've just penned down a few SQL statements here and rest of the stuff I'm going to do on the fly. And this is just to save some time that I've put down a few things. So I really don't know as I proceed with the demo, how far can I go? But then we will use our time effectively and uh, try to cover as much as possible. Okay, we're all good. Let's get started. First things first, 
the concept behind parallel execution. And again, a very simplistic overview. If someone gives you a bunch of papers, okay, here, let's take some bunch of papers. Luckily, I have something, okay? So if someone gives you a bunch of papers like this, do you see me? There you go, bunch of papers. And someone tells you, count them, right? Count them. So you're going to start counting them. One, two, three, four, five, so on and so forth. And you are going to take some time, whatever time you take. And your objective is just counting it. Think about applying the count uh, function, like the aggregate function, counting the number of records, counting the number of pages. So this is going to take some time. Now, when you look at these bunch of pages, right? Let me bring it closer to the camera. Very small set. You might be thinking, oh, Amit, this is piece of cake. I'll do it in a minute. But think about these, you know, if these were like big bunch of pages, then of course it would take some time. Parallel execution here would mean that you distribute these pages to, uh, to your team members. Let's say you have four people in your team member. You are the manager. I know many of you are laughing and smiling now. You are the manager and you pass off some set of papers to your team members randomly. You just take out, you know, approximately you try to distribute it equally and you tell them, okay, go ahead and count it and let me know. And you take their counts and just add them up. Okay. So someone says, okay, my total page count is 45. Someone says 50, which is 95. Someone tells it's 25. So it's 120. And someone says, okay, my count is 60. So it's total 180. So you take the data from your four team members, you add them up. You are the controller thread. You are the main boss and the job gets done very quickly. So that is distribution of work amongst more resources. So when you were doing it all alone yourself, this was serial execution, single threaded execution. I don't want to use the word serial execution, but anyway, single threaded execution. You're just doing it on your own and you're taking some amount of time. Let's say you take, you take about uh, five minutes to do that. But when you give it to your team members and each one is taking one minute, each one in parallel is taking one minute, right? So they do the job in four minutes. No, they are parallelly doing the job. So overall, it takes one minute. That is the idea behind parallel execution. Exactly in the same way, SQL Server does parallel execution. When it looks at your select query, your workload, it decides internally that Will it really help if I give multiple threads to this execution? Can the execution go faster? That's really the idea. And, and I'm just giving a very simplistic overview. Of course, a lot of other decisions go there, but that's one of the idea here that looking at the cost of the query, that this is an expensive thing to do. Can I give more threads to it? And can the job be done faster? If the answer is yes, it will throw up more threads for your query execution in expectation that the job is going to get done much faster. That is parallel execution. Now, the moment we talk about parallelism in SQL Server, and if you're connected with the community, you would know that not everything is honky dory with parallelism. In many cases, many scenarios, we, you have to sometimes forcefully turn off this automatic parallel behavior of SQL Server for a lot of different reasons. Today's webinar is not a good uh, time to talk about those edge case scenarios and some of those production scenarios, all right? But in general, parallel execution is good and you should not be turning it off. You should not tell SQL Server, no, I don't want it. Don't do it. Let SQL Server do it because in, in you know, generally speaking, in most cases, it is going to do a good job. Now, the important thing to keep in mind about parallelism is just because there is parallel execution doesn't mean that it is good from every perspective, right? Parallel execution may mean faster execution. You may get your results faster, like you got the count of pages much faster. Your query gets executed much faster. That may be possible, but you are throwing up more resources. This is an important thing to keep in mind. Like in serial execution, you were alone, a single human resource counting the pages. But then when you give it to your team members, um, you are adding up four more resources. So more resources, and that is more resource consumption. Um, and whether that is cheap or expensive, you got, you got to understand that. Maybe those four team members are very expensive people in your company and you've given them this job to do. So exactly in, in a similar way, when, you, when SQL Server throws up more threads, it needs more processors because 
a thread is tied up to a processor and as you know going by the the computer science logic right a processor can execute only one thread at a time so let's say if you're running on a box with eight cores and let's say there are eight processors or eight virtual processors or eight logical processors whatever terminology you want to use you have eight of them which means eight threads are running in parallel and you are consuming all those eight threads if you were uh, all those eight processors if your query was running in serial execution single threaded you would be consuming only one processor which means the remaining seven processors are available uh, to execute something else it might be a heavy production environment where um, process threads are constantly coming in going out i mean the user requests are constantly coming in going out and you need processors to be made available so you see things go things go really complicated things uh, things are not as easy as i just kind of explain it so a lot of things have to be considered when you talk about parallel execution right so this was a very quick overview now let's put this concept let's put this idea into sql server and see parallelism in action I'm using AdventureWorks 2016 for the demo, and now I have switched on uh, to SSMS, and I hope all of you can see SSMS out there. So let's change the database context to AdventureWorks 2016. Let's turn on actual execution plan. There is really no way to find out if you don't turn on act actual execution plan, whether your query was running uh, in one thread using one thread or did it run using multiple threads. So I'm going to turn on actual execution plan. Look at this first query and exactly like what we talked about, I want to count the number of records out there, just like counting the number of pages in that bunch there. Let's do this and I'm going to execute this now. So once we execute this, we get the output very quickly. The query has hardly taken less than a second. Let's jump over to the execution plan. Now, if you are well versed with SQL Server and execution plans, you can clearly look at the plan and tell that this is not a parallel plan. This is a serial plan simply because you know that if this was a parallel plan, you would actually see parallel operators out there, right? Parallel iterators. Those will be visual indicators telling you that, okay, SQL Server has decided parallelism for your given query. Now, this query did not seem to be very expensive to SQL Server. You know why? Because SQL Server was like, okay, I only have to deal with 100,000 rows. I just have to count them. This is no big task. So I'm just going to execute it with, with one thread and I am done. But the moment you tell SQL Server to count records from a table that has millions of records. So let's say there is a table here called transaction that has millions of records and you're telling SQL Server to count them. Exactly the same query, just that the object is different now and you execute and it takes a bit of time if you just see it has taken more than a second actually. And if you see there are 31 million rows out there, you jump over to the execution plan and this is what I meant. Now you can clearly see that first, uh, few additional iterators or operators have come into the plan and you can clearly see this visual indicator, this, you know, yellow thing with arrows indicating that this is a parallel plan and this query executed in parallel with multiple threads. You know, sometimes when we say parallel plan, we're technically wrong because a plan is not parallel. A plan has parallel operators because if you see stream aggregate, compute scalar, and all of these are just single threaded iterators, so to say. Okay. And um, uh, in this case, so you just can't say the whole plan is parallel, though you have parallel iterators here. Now, let's take both of them together so that you... Uh, get the real idea between two of them, jump over to the execution plan and you can see serial execution in the first one and you can see parallel execution in the second one. Now, quick question again. So when you look at these plans, of course, the indicators are here. Uh, the, the, these are the visual indicators that you can see. But what if you want to get slightly more details like Okay, how many threads were used, right? So if I take the select operator here, I just select the select operator, right click, go to properties here. And um, okay, let's go to the iterator itself. So not select, I'm going to go to index scan because that's the operation really, right? So if you go to index scan, I've selected that in the first plan 
and you have actual number of rows. Let's go and expand this and you can see all threads here. So when you see all threads here, actual number of rows, all threads, this just simply means that there was only one thread that did the job. Now this, as you may expect, will be different when you look at this fellow. Uh, and you know, guys, look at the thickness of the arrows there. Yeah, that clearly it is. Okay, this one and this one, how thick the arrows are dealing with a lot of data. So if you take this one now and, and you go into the properties window, so right click, go to properties. There you go. Actual number of rows there. And if you expand this, now you can clearly see that yes, this was a parallel execution and you have multiple threads. So actual number of rows, of course, was whatever you saw there and you have thread one to thread eight. So eight threads were used for this purpose. You also have thread zero. Thread zero is the boss, is the manager. They're not doing anything. They are only assigning and controlling and managing and criticizing. And the good ones are helping, cooperating, are sensitive, empathize and whatnot. Let's not get into a different tangent. Let's focus on threads. So thread zero is, uh, is the controller thread. Okay. And thread one to eight are the threads that do the job. So there were eight threads that were assigned. Now, my question to all of you is, okay, eight threads. Why eight? Anyone? Why not 16? Why not 32 threads? Why eight threads? 